And welcome back to Let's Play East, Book 1 and 2. Last time, I got lost looking for the Eastern Canal after we drained the waterway. This time, I'm actually in the Eastern Canal, because I just decided to cut out the trip to it. I'm really sorry about getting lost there. That was pretty embarrassing. Uh, and the, I'm just gonna be on the level with you. It's still very annoying to navigate these waterways, so I'm still probably going to get lost. Uh, yeah, already hit a dead end. Oh, great. Now, there are two major things that we're looking for at the moment. One of them is a upgrade... Ah, oh, jeez, I can't believe I just did that. One of them is an upgrade to uh, our current sword uh, to go along with our battle equipment. And the other thing is, of course, the golden pendant. Uh, we need the golden pendant to utilize the other goddess statue. We actually didn't need to explore the eastern waterway too much the last time we were here, because... Uh, what you needed from it, the Silver Pendant, is basically right next to where you start, so it's actually very easy to miss that, then go on just this whole roundabout trip exploring the whole place and uh, not get anything. Okay, that's a dead end. There's a lot of dead ends. Uh, this place is de basically designed to be laid out as annoyingly as possible. But hopefully we find what we're looking for in relative quickness. Oh, well, here's one of the drainage uh, pipes that leads to uh, another part of the waterway. Kind of wish I could have found one of those last video. Alright, so this way leads to the drainage pipe. Alright, so that door is something we need to open, but uh, we actually can't get to that door at the moment. Uh, every path we could take is uh, blocked off to it. Actually, I think we might have to take that drainage pipe, but let's go down that way the, real quick. Right. Uh, if you want to know where you ended off in, let's see, just open up the save screen here. Uh, save over this file. We are in the middle canal now. This is where we found Keith. Uh, now, there's a couple other things that we can find in the middle canal. Uh, I was just looking for Keith at the time, because he was the only thing that really mattered. But there is a couple other things of note here. Uh, does this way lead anywhere, or do I have to... Okay, no, we have to take the stairs. It isn't always easy to tell what's actually a path and what isn't. And these guys are actually pretty tough. Uh, okay, now I'm really confused. Did that drainage pipe just lead me? Okay, okay, I was gonna say. That would have uh, been frustrating. I was gonna say, uh, th as far as I'm aware, the drainage pipes always just take you out to a specific location that wouldn't let you be trapped. Alright, now this staircase should take us to a treasure. Alright, what have we got here? The Idol of Falcon. This is an upgrade to the Idol of Hawk, the thing that gives your fireballs a uh, homing ability. Uh, just like the Idol of Hawk, it's not very good, so I wouldn't recommend equipping it. Uh, if you're grinding on really weak enemies, like the enemies in uh, uh, Jira's basement, uh, you can equip the Idol of Falcon, stand in a really safe spot, and just nuke those guys from a completely safe distance, but I don't feel that's necessary in the slightest. And here's the other item I was looking for. Alright, let's open this up. We get the battle sword, the last piece of battle equipment, so we're fully decked out in battle gear now. There is one more thing that we have to find in the canals, but not at the moment. If I uh, found it right now, you'd probably immediate to immediately tell when it would become irrelevant again, but for the time being, it's not a huge deal, and so I'd, I won't worry myself too much about it. Alright, with that all taken care of, let's go on to the next bit. I better uh, let my HP recover a little bit, because once again, the enemies are going to be getting a little tough in the upcoming areas. Yeah, there's just never a safe moment in East 2. Oh, hey, Keith! The Belfry, huh?
Jeez. So yeah, we've actually okay. Yeah, we've actually reached the final area of uh, the uh, whoa, jeez, the final area of Solomon Shrine. Okay, okay, I'm just going to get to a safer spot real quick. Oh right, yeah, I remember this. Uh, the enemies here—they're immune to fire. This is one of the only locations in the game where uh, your fireball spell will not hurt the enemies around. But uh, this is the Goddess's Castle area of uh, Solomon Shrine, connected to the Belfry. I shall listen. Well, I'm about as courageous as they come. Mm-hmm. That's what I've been telling everyone. Uh, how much you want that it's Lilia? Hmm. Sounds simple enough. Alright, so we have our next quest, and the, the, these statues actually don't change the scroll of guidance for us. Now, every time you come here, you get fully healed with all your MP restored as well. Uh, the one downside is every time you uh, come back, you'll have to go through that text spiel again to get the healing. But uh, an important thing about reaching the Goddess's Castle is that we actually have our next teleportation location. We can just return directly to here. And I was talking about an area where I would spend a lot of time just grinding up until I reach level 60, and that would be this area. While the enemies here are immune to fire, they spawn constantly, they have the highest experience yield of any enemy in the game, so this is the ideal place to grind to level 60. Uh, I, was, I, I actually did not expect to reach here so quickly, uh, looks like I'm actually going to have to splice two videos together, it looks like. But yes, I am going to be stopping to get level 60 here, so I will cut the video here, and when we come back, I will have reached level 60. So, one moment. And we're back! Uh, that level grinding I did took about 21 minutes, according to my capture program's timer, so not too, too bad, and it was the absolute last grinding session in the whole game. Now, I've explained before, but the reason I wanted to get to level 60 specifically is because there's a few more fixed experience gains uh, left in the game uh, that don't scale with level, and I want to be at level 62 for the final boss, as the final boss is really difficult. Uh, level 60 is also a very good cutoff point, because this is just the point where basically everything gives negligible experience. These sword guys only give 7, these wizards only give 3. Yeah, pretty good place to call it there, unless you want to spend a ton of time. Uh, the downside is that uh, all the bosses from this point on will be absolute jokes until the final boss. Uh, this guy is actually one of the tougher ones. Uh, basically, uh, you, the boss himself is invulnerable. What you have to do is hit these three th or four things flying around the room. And you destroy one, it damages the boss's health, sends out another one. I'm not actually too worried about dying here, because I'm just so overleveled that uh, he can't really damage me that much. If you come to this guy at the intended level, he's actually very difficult. At least until you destroy a couple of these things and you actually stagger the timing out. It's kind of weird. Their default pattern is actually much harder to avoid than if you just destroy a bunch of them and they're all moving around independent of each other. I don't really understand it, but I guess that's just how it works. Maybe it's just me that feels it's that way. And like other bosses in the game, he actually gets easier the more you damage him, because there's only one left. And there we go. But yeah, I get a nice experience boost there, because I'm already at level 60. 4,000 experience is not easy to come by at this point. Alright, we're in the Belfry. Uh-oh. If we remember what Keith told us, it's five bells and the sacrifice goes through. Get out of here now, or you will perish like the others. I appreciate the warning, Maria, but it's not really necessary. Yeah, that uh, lady with the uh, 
pretty nice green afro is uh, Maria. I was reading some of the Game Facts guys for this game, and there was one guy who just really hated Maria's voice for some reason. I don't understand it. It's not that bad. I, I will say this, for a game released in 1990 that actually had any voice work, it's actually surprisingly good, although it helps that they actually had some noteworthy names. Uh, particularly the villains. Uh, Dallas is voiced by Jim Cummings, and uh, Darm is voiced by Alan Oppenheimer. Alan Oppenheimer, most of you may know, is the voice of Skeletor. He also did the uh, opening narration. That's a fun little bit of trivia there. Actually, if you want to hear something really cool, uh, the Turbo CD version of East 4 uh, never got released in America, uh, but there was a... Uh, this area is blocked off right now, we can't get this chest. There was a fan translation effort, and then later, uh, because that game had voice acting too, a group of uh, East fans on a forum got together and recorded their own English voice track for it, and they actually managed to get Alan Oppenheimer to provi provide the vo voice of the main villain in that game. I thought that was really cool. Alright, the third bell's already rung. We've still got some time to get to the top. As you may notice, uh, the Belfry has that really... Uh, <laughs> Really a uh, motion sickness inducing uh, scrolling environment in the background. Uh, the TurboGrafx-16 in CD did not do scrolling very well. If you've ever seen the uh, TurboGrafx CD version of East 3, that game <laughs> is very difficult to watch. Such a brave warrior you are, Edo. I am truly impressed that you've made it to this lofty point. I commend your efforts. However, you'll be distressed to hear that I've already rung the death bell four times. If I ring it once more, the girl Maria will die. <laughs> Let me explain the meaning of this ancient ritual. The ancestral priests of this land lived over 700 years ago. But their descendants still reside in East today. The five bells are the ceremonial warning. Before I shatter their souls and drain the last of their life's blood. I do love this. Now please, enjoy the sweet sound of the bell's last ring. <laughs> And I'm afraid we're too late. We could not prevent the fifth bell ringing, and as Dallas explained, once that fifth bell rings, it's absolute. There's no saving Maria at that point. This is that a pretty horrific looking maw there. I can see why he keeps the robe on. But the only thing we can do now is just go back to the base of the bell three, and uh, hopefully we can find that uh, dream idol that the goddesses were telling us about. We can probably assume that it was in that chest behind the barrier. Perhaps now that the bells have rung, the barrier has dissipated. And it has. The Dreaming Stone Idol. I wonder how we use this thing. They did say they'd explain it to us if we go back to them with it. I suppose uh, we should at least uh, see Maria and give her our respects. Seems that we were just too late. I wonder what we're gonna tell the Hadat and his son. Well, unfortunately, we can't worry too much about that at the moment. We've got other people we need to save. And we're back here with this music again. That is one nice thing about, like, the canal areas in the Belfry, is that there's actually different music. Why am I killing these guys? I have max money. I did max out my money. It Actually, I, I was worried that my money wouldn't max out before I finished the grinding, but I was actually wrong. Uh, these guys are worth 100 gold a pop, and I hit the money cap uh, quite a bit of time before I uh, hit level 60. All 
Alright. You got an instruction manual for this thing? Yeah, of course it is. Hmm, the blue orb. Didn't we give that to Tarf and Keith? Alright, so we actually do know where the blue orb is. Tarf should have it. I don't see any reason why Keith would keep it. And this is the real purpose of why Tarf came here, just so they'd uh, give you an indication that he was around and he's that that he's in uh, Ramia Village. Hmm. With Decca, huh? Oh, jeez, don't tell me. Of course. Hmm. Yeah, the East Continent uh, is floating in the air. That is strange that it would just be falling all of a sudden. I wonder what would be causing that. Well, now what do we do? Oh, hey, the meeting is over. Well, that sounds like a hint if I've ever heard one. Yes, the blue orb is in the meeting room that we visited all those videos ago. Actually, uh, this is actually going way better than I thought. Uh, I was afraid Solomon Shrine was just going to take forever. <laughs> but no, we're, we're getting through this pretty quickly. But yes, uh, the meeting room that we uh, went to and uh, the uh, Demon's HR department was in the middle of a discussion. Hopefully what was prolonging the meeting there was the blue orb. And this is... Uh, not quite the last major backtrack we're going to have to do, but uh, it's close. Uh, we've got a couple more instances of backtracking, and then we'll be done and we can go on to the end of the game. Oops, not this way, this way. Yeah, as you can see, uh, every enemy at this point is a bit too wimpy for us. At all is strong. Okay, uh, I believe right here. Yes. All right, let's go into that conference room. All right, well, that was surprisingly simple. And like I mentioned, the goddess's castle is uh, now uh, a teleport location. All right, so... I assume they'll insert the blue orb for us, and then they'll tell us how we use it. Yes, yes, you've told us three times already. Hmm. Oh, come on! Ugh! Can't we just take this stupid idol to the people affected and show it to them to de-stone them? That would just mean warping back to the runaway hideout. Okay, okay. Well, thanks for the MP at least. So yeah, now we have to go to back to the top of the Belfry. Not the longest walk, and there's nothing that can attack us on the way, so I guess there's that, but still. They got a little carried away with this uh, whole runaround business that they've been giving us. Don't even have another boss to fight. You know, towards the beginning of the Solomon Shrine, they mentioned a demon named Yatai. I don't know if any of the bosses we actually ended up fighting. Hey, what the? That's strange. Did the demons take it? 
But, uh, as I was saying, I'm not exactly sure if uh, either of the bosses that we fought, either that giant moth thing in the center of the uh, shrine, or that uh, guy with the four uh, bouncing things, not sure if either of those guys are supposed to be Yatai or not. I mean, I would assume he's a relatively important demon since they felt fit to name him, but uh, I couldn't tell you if you actually thought, fought him or not. Once again, I implore anybody who might know better than I do, uh, please, uh, feel, free, feel free to share. There is one benefit to this whole take the Dreaming Stone idol to the top of the Belfry quest, though, and that is that this is the last bit of quest experience that we can get. There weren't too many instances of quest experience in East 2, probably because the experience yields were just a lot higher, so they wouldn't give you the multiple level ups like they did in East 1. But uh, this is one of them, and with it, we should get up to level 61. And with that, we should be able to get to level 62 with the uh, next boss fight. Alright, so just take out the Dreaming Stone Idol. And there we go! That should undo the curse, and we have reached level 61. This is a higher level than I got to in my last playthrough, so that's nice. But I think that's a good place to call it here. When we come back next time, we will be teleporting back to the Runaways hideout. And from there, well, we'll just see what happens. I hope you enjoyed watching, and please, have a nice day.